All right, squad, so I'm here with uh, Haley Bishop, mm -hmm. the head nutritionist for, <laughs> give me the title one more time. Football, uh, football. director of sports nutrition for football. There we go, you should've given me the card. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. First and foremost, um, beautiful place. When we first walked in, I was, I was, taking, I was blown away. So how long have you uh, been a part of the program? This is my second season. Can you tell um, kind of instantly how, what kind of impact that you're kind of making like in your position? Uh, can you kind of see that on the field working with the football team? Yeah, I think uh, this being like my second season, I'm able to relate to the guys and really kind of know what they're looking for on the field. So some guys, especially like on sideline, uh, they want certain things. And so being able to kind of know what they're looking for, what their individual needs are. So some guys are really heavy sweaters. Um, some like aren't really good at feeling for the game. So being able to really know what they need all the time, because I'm here all the time, and then being able to make that impact on the field too. So how many guys do you have on the team? Uh, we have 119 right now. So you almost have like 119 like kids. Kids, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I make that joke all the time. How long did it kind of take you to uh, to really um, like kind of know or like learn learn your team? Um, it takes a little bit, especially like coming in. So I came uh, like in this, like right off our winter season. So like going into spring um, and it just takes a different, I don't know, it takes a little while to get to know like the different vibes and um, try to figure out how to relate to them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say like three to four months and you were here every single day, like you live here. so. Um, it doesn't take too long, but I feel like once we got into season, when I started in the winter, um, I felt like pretty comfortable with the team. So that's good. Does, does fueling change uh, throughout the seasons? Like, do you fuel differently throughout throughout seasons of the, of the year? Yep. So depending on their training cycle is kind of how their like fueling um, cycle kind of goes. So um, like periodization. So we'll look at like in the winter, um, they're really working on like body comp. So um, all those goals that they have, like especially those freshman guys that come in in January, will uh, start there. And it's their perfect time to like get lifting in. Um, it's basically like, especially those freshmen teaching them a lot of stuff like, hey, like you can't just live off one meal a day. Like you have to eat this amount because the, um, the expectations are so much higher here. And so uh, teaching them that, and then just guys that need to tweak stuff. So that's when we do like our body composition testing, and then we'll set those goals and work towards that, especially throughout the spring and the summer. And then um, in the fall, it's more so just like performance feeling. So we're not trying to change their body at all. We're just trying to make sure they're good for the game. How, how long would you, do you think it takes for, for an athlete to kind of learn their body? Like you said, they're coming in as freshmen, they don't, do they necessarily know their body and what really helps fuel them? Well, if you're coming in, a lot of them are like 17. Right. So um, it definitely takes a little while just because they are still growing. And then um, you'll see a lot of guys that come in. Like I have one, for example, it came in at like 155 and now he's pushing like 180 and he's um, a senior right now. So you are looking at them grow and you want to make sure it's like the right type of weight, right? And um, it takes a little while for them to understand um, the expectations of the sport too, like coming from high school, like they definitely um, had a lot of expectations, but coming to play D1, like what does that look like? And your day is filled. Like you have lists in the morning, you have meetings, you have practice. So how do you fuel for that day and meet all those goals? So hopefully by the end of their like freshman into sophomore year, they're starting to understand that a little bit more. And then you really see like the biggest benefit is seeing like your seniors and like they just like, it's like clockwork, like they know exactly what they need to be doing and you only need to tweak a couple of things here and there because they, they don't really have all the questions and stuff like your freshmen kind of do. Our sponsor for today's video, SeatGeek, is a ticketing app that makes simple the ticket purchasing process. As festival season ends and sports wrap up, SeatGeek is the go-to resource that allows you to find any event you're looking for in one app. Okay, so there was this one time that I got scammed by a ticket scalper because I had waited until the last minute to get tickets for a Christmas Day game. And had I used SeatGeek, I would have had an experience of a lifetime. But instead, here I am telling you this story. We know football season has kicked off and you and your friends are looking forward to the rivalries and homecoming games. Get your tickets from SeatGeek. Use promo code Koisky to receive $20 off your first purchase. Hold up, wait, wait, wait. Here's a very important bit of information. On the app, there are green dots that indicate those tickets are a good deal. Our Korsky code applies to those good deals also, but stay away from the red dots. Again, just so we're clear, when you use promo code Korsky, you receive $20 off your first purchase. All right, now back to the video. 
Do you, uh, do you, uh, does the program kind of walk them through cooking themselves and teaching them how to cook? Yep, uh, so meals? we'll, in the spring, we have a little bit more time. So um, we'll do like a couple of cooking classes um, with especially uh, the freshmen, but I've done it with every single position. And we'll start with like beginners. So we did like French toast and then we worked our way up to fajitas and stuff like that. Um, and then we'll go take them around at the grocery store and stuff too, to make sure they know, like, it can be really intimidating to go to the grocery store, especially as like a young freshman coming in, but having um, that opportunity to walk them around, be like, hey, this is what you need, especially towards your goal. Like if you're a weight gainer, this would be a great thing to have. And then budgeting. A lot of them like don't really know what it looks like to walk in the store with $50. Like they're gonna buy honey buns when they first get here. So how can I help you like still buy honey buns, but also buy things that will help you perform better. We're sitting in like our training table area and we actually feed them, um, currently we feed them about three times a day. So they're getting breakfast, dinner, and a snack from me. So um, I really get the opportunity to plate coach them a lot and they're eating the majority of their meals with me anyways. So when you walk in, you see people like move their plate, like, oh no, she's coming. Let me I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> like say I'm scary, uh -huh. but um, we do have a dietitian at every meal and I'm at most of them um, just to kind of help guide them. So uh, we'll like walk around and be like, hey, like this is what we need to be doing based on our goals. Um, if they don't want to do that, like they're not going to get in trouble, but it's definitely something where they know they need to add like a color or we need to add extra carbohydrates. Um, and then I have a couple of guys that are working really hard towards their goals and they'll sit with me. And so we'll like talk about their plates and why I added something and stuff like that. How fast does a does a diet change typically uh, take effect in, in, a, in an athlete, a student athlete? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, it kind of depends on their commitment level. <laughs> um, so you have someone that like, is really working hard. Um, you know, if they're trying to lean out, like you really don't want them to lose more than half a pound to a pound to two pounds a week. Um, and then same thing with gaining, you really don't want them to gain too much weight too fast because it's the wrong weight. Um, so, you know, depending on what their goal levels look like, it could take, you know, I think I saw it like six to eight weeks to see some real change. For a lean out, um, you're kind of going to visualize your plate. And so most of the time you're going to go for like a lean protein. Um, and your protein should take up like probably about a third of your plate. Um, and that's going to look like not fried chicken, more like grilled items, um, things with like a less, um, not as many fat, uh, like steak is some cuts of meat are very high in fat. And so um, just kind of limiting those a couple times a week instead of like the majority of your meals and then aiming for a lot of color. So uh, your plate should mostly look like protein color and then you'd want like about a fistful of carbs for some, I know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm glad you're not like over my shoulder <laughs> because yeah, I have a lot of carbs usually. I, <laughs> I definitely lean more towards curating like my specialty is West Virginia Vintage, mm -hmm. WG Vintage, um, being from Morgantown. So I take a lot of pride in having like the best collection of vintage WVU pieces. Okay, like, so you say you got the best collection. Carry a lot of like band and music tees, okay. a good amount of like sports tees, like vintage Budweiser tees with like the frogs and lizards. Those are always great. Oh. We're, live, we're in a time where obviously we get information, so much information on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see almost every week it's, it's, I get, hey, this is good for you. Then almost like the following week, yeah. this is terrible for yep. you. <laughs> so how do, how do I, as a student athlete, how do I kind of decipher uh, the good information from the bad? Yep. So that's a good question. I, um, social media is a catch 22, right? Cause you can definitely see a lot of cool things that are happening, but there's so much misinformation out there mm -hmm. and every, anyone can claim anything. Like a diet worked for you. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to work for everyone. Um, so some of the things you can look for are like legit claims or like research that backs it. Um, and always notice like their credentials. Like, does it say I'm a nutritionist? Does it say like, you know, um, I have this kind of certification. So knowing to look for like a registered dietitian or a sports dietitian um, or someone that has those credentials to actually be telling you what you need to eat um, can, and those false in, uh, influencers can be really harmful because they can just tell you whatever and you can walk away and, you know, 
have a lot of issues later on in life. Sure. So it doesn't really matter like what you say, it matters like how much you care. So like if you are the smartest person in the room and you yell a bunch of information out at the guys, like are they really gonna take that and like run with it versus like um, just having that relationship with them and knowing that um, they trust you. So, you know, you don't have to be the smartest person, but you have that confidence that they can, they'll take that information because of your relationship. All right, so I'm here with uh, Miss Laura Bielko, uh -huh. the general manager for Sodexo. Sodexo. Correct. All right. Nice, nice to meet to, you. Nice to meet you as well. This is your domain. It is. You kind of run and manage. What, do, what does your day to day look like? Day to day looks like right now overseeing this facility, which is just football in general, which is uh, a lot different from other locations across the country because most of the training table facilities. Uh, encompass every athletic team where this is just exclusively for football. So um, we basically work hand in hand with the nutritional team here um, and on a daily basis just feed um, the student athletes that are a part of the football team. Working with such a smaller team, do you get more feedback as far as what they want from the kitchen? Definitely. So uh, <laughs> working with the nutritional staff, they have a, a team um, leadership committee uh -huh. that they meet with um, on a monthly basis, I believe. Um, and they voice their opinions and suggestions on what they like, what they dislike, and what they would like to see more of. So we try to incorporate that into the menu selection. You kind of mentioned that uh, you're in football season, yes. year 19. 19th, right. 19th football, football season, season. correct. Okay. How, how have you seen things change uh, here, in, here in Morgantown? They've changed drastically from uh, coaching staff to coaching staff, as well as with the addition of the sports nutrition team that just came on board about five years ago here. So uh, we never had um, the opportunity to work with the nutritionists for that. Um, and now that we do, we work hand in hand together to develop the menus, to educate the, the student athletes, which is a big factor uh, into our daily role here. Um, and, and we do several different things, cooking demonstrations uh, for the cooking classes. Um, and, and the big thing is educating the student athlete. Has there been something that uh, you guys have kind of incorporated in the menu that you were surprised that they actually liked it or enjoyed? Um, you can hide some things in there. Okay. <laughs> like you can hide some cauliflower in their mashed potatoes and they don't know <laughs> that okay. it's in there and they, they love them. <laughs> okay, and you're like, yeah. Yes, we gotta win, we gotta win there. <laughs> Is there, is there has there been something that uh that kind of you were embarrassed about like they were like oh my I thought they would like that but like nobody tried it and nobody tried this dish. Uh, it just varies and that's from season to season with the team. It actually varies on more like you know pork as opposed to and not liking pork and um, a lot of more chicken and salmon eaters for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it just depends on the team. Is that is that more um, more recently? Do you feel like the student athletes are, are more cognizant or, or smarter about their food choices? Absolutely, absolutely. And with the help of the nutritional staff, um, that plays into it. It makes it easier, um, I guess, to plan uh, if they're eating the, what Haley and her staff want them to eat. Sure. Um, you know, so obviously it makes it a little bit easier when you just have to order. You know, what's on the menu and what we've developed. Do you take pride in some of the wins, or do you take uh, credit for some of the wins on the on the on, on Saturdays? Because sure, of, absolutely, I do. Sure, that's right. <laughs> we gave him that fuel that he needed to go out there and play like that, so yes. Absolutely. I told you the cauliflower would work. That's right, that's right. We're one big family here, so yes.